here in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, and we are looking at two boxes or caskets from the Middle Byzantine period that are made of bone and ivory. One of the most striking features to me when I look at these is I'm noticing that each one is composed of separate plaques that were attached to the wooden frame on the interior. All of the plaques show us this playful and wonderful world of mythological figures, though I'm not quite identifying a specific myth. Yeah, these boxes were made of wood at their core, but then they were decorated with these different plaques of ivory and bone. One of them is completely made of bone plaques, the other a combination of uh, ivory figural plaques and bone strips decorated with rosettes. Because these boxes often then ended up, the ones that survived anyway, in Western medieval cathedral treasuries where they housed relics which were enshrouded by textiles, some of which were Byzantine textiles, that might have even had some of the same playful imagery such as griffins, eagles, animals, that also appear on some of these ivory boxes. These kinds of decorative and mythological elements were actually common on secular objects throughout the Mediterranean, not just in Byzantium, but in Islamic lands during this time as well. In addition to Thinking about these connections across the Mediterranean, it's interesting to think how these images stretch into the past. So we might be wanting to look at it and kind of identify each figure with a specific myth. But they probably enjoyed rather a more freely associated set of connotations, including the one that Virgil made, where gates of ivory led to false dreams. Ivory both was alluring but also deceptive and maybe lent itself therefore to these depictions that were playful but not instructive. These plaques don't seem to be telling a coherent story that one would read from one to another. We see isolated figures, a warrior figure on a throne, figures with weapons engaging in battle or, or kind of mock combat. We see uh, playful erotis um, frolicking with scarves, musical instruments. There, Many of them are semi-nude. Some are hunting a lot lion and others appear with a tamed panther. It's tempting to see carved ivory from the Middle Ages and like the ancient statues of Greece and Rome think that they were white as they often appear in museum collections today. But just like those ancient statues, carved ivory in Byzantium was almost always gilded with gold leaf and painted with many different colors. Another way our aesthetic preconceptions might differ from the Byzantine audiences, I'm noticing those little rosette strips that run along the side of the figures are often cut off even in the middle of the rosette. The way the rosettes are cut off is a very clear indication that those were being carved as big long strips and then cut to fit in these various shapes and sizes to cover the wooden box with these decorative elements. Of course we wonder why they were made, for whom they were made, and Earlier scholarly works on these tended to be grounded in contemporary gender assumptions, gender stereotypes. So they would say, oh, women must have owned these, and maybe they put perfumes in them. But there really is no evidence for that whatsoever. All we really know is the people who had these had some sense of the classical past, or at least enjoyed having other people assume they did. And they were wealthy because these were very expensive materials, and they've been carved at a very high standard of craftsmanship. The quality of the carving in indicates that these are luxury objects. The non-sacred decoration suggests that these kinds of boxes had a non-sacred function. They were probably used in domestic or courtly context, but really we don't know. They probably were used by a range of people to contain a range of different objects. And it's interesting because since these were made after iconoclasm, so they're squarely in the Middle Byzantine period, we might think of them as an aberration, right, after this big conflict about the nature of religious images. But we have to think that these secular images in a way, are the least problematized body of images in Byzantine art history. It's the religious images that were called into question during iconoclasm, and so maybe they didn't have the frisson of the forbidden. And we know that these decorative motifs were not only popular in Byzantium at this time, but were found throughout the Mediterranean in Islamic lands as well. And so it seems likely that these kinds of boxes may have been used as diplomatic gifts and objects of trade beyond the borders of Byzantium as well. So as they changed hands, no doubt changing meaning as well to their new audience.